hyper-accurate long-term weather forecasting, life-saving drugs discovered through a deep study of the behavior of complex molecules, new synthetic carbon capturing materials to help reverse climate change caused by fossil fuels, stable long-lasting batteries to power electric vehicles and being able to store green energy for the power grid. It might seem like an ambitious wish list, but many scientists predict that the emerging era of quantum computing could lead to unimaginable breakthroughs like these, while also tackling other major problems that are beyond the reach of our current computing systems. Today's digital conventional computers are built on a classical and very limited model of computing. In the long run, to effectively solve the world's most persistent computing problems, we're going to have to turn to an entirely new and more capable animal, the quantum computer. After long nights of theorizing, we have found a simple solution to help grow this channel. Here it is. Like, subscribe, and do hit the bell icon. We would greatly appreciate it. difference between a classical computer and a quantum computer. So to understand why it's so tricky to build quantum computers, here are a few facts about classical computers first. A bit in a normal computer is like a switch, on or off, one or zero in short, a binary transistor. So if you want to run many computations simultaneously, you need just as many bits. And while today's chips can feature several billion transistors, their number is still limited. But a quantum bit called a qubit can be on and off at the same time, and can be on or off. This means it can perform two equations simultaneously. Thus, two qubits can perform four equations. Three qubits can perform eight, etc. In quantum mechanics, this ability to do or be several things simultaneously is called superposition. Ultimately, the difference between a classical computer and a quantum computer is not like the difference between an old car and a new one. Rather, it's like the difference between a horse and a hawk. While one can run, the other can fly. Classical computers and quantum computers are indeed that different. The conventional computer's Achilles heel. The fact is that a computational task such as quickly finding the prime factors for very large integers is probably out of reach for even the fastest conventional computers of the future. The reason behind this is that finding the prime factors of a number is a function that has exponential growth. Take the number 51. See how long it takes you to find the two unique prime numbers that you can multiply together to generate it. If you're familiar with these kinds of problems, it probably only took you a few seconds to find 3 and 17, both prime numbers. Generate 51. As it turns out, this seemingly simple process lies at the heart of the digital economy and is the basis for our most secure types of encryptions. The reason we use this technique in encryption is that as the numbers used in prime factorization get larger and larger, it becomes increasingly difficult for conventional computers to factor them. Once you reach a certain number of digits, you find that it would take even the fastest conventional computer months, years, centuries, millennia, or even countless eons to factor it. Other equally stubborn problems at the heart of modern science and mathematics include certain molecular modeling and mathematical optimization problems, which promise to crash any supercomputer that dares to come anywhere near them. Enter the quantum computer. Conventional computers are strictly digital and rely purely on classical computing principles and properties. Quantum computers, on the other hand, are strictly quantum. Accordingly, they rely on quantum principles and properties, most importantly superposition and entanglement, that make all the difference in their almost miraculous capacity to solve seemingly insurmountable problems. Benefits of Quantum Computers Here's a quick overview of just some of the places where we can feel a huge impact apart from the countless applications we don't know about yet. It is self-evident that building a working quantum computer is extremely lucrative. Drug and Materials Development Quantum computers could enable drastic progression in drug discovery and development, ultimately giving scientists the ability to solve problems that are currently intractable. With their extremely high processing power, these machines will be able to simultaneously review multiple molecules, proteins, and chemicals through quantum simulation, something currently unachievable with a standard computer, allowing drug options to be developed faster and more effectively than today. Finance Quantum computers could bring huge potential benefits to the financial sector, from deeper analytics to new, faster trading possibilities. Indeed, many major institutions are looking to quantum computing to boost trade, transactions, and data speed. 
Companies such as IBM and JP Morgan Chase have been experimenting with quantum technology to gauge the specific actions it will be capable of performing on a wide scale in the near future. Another potential area is financial modeling, which could be greatly improved by quantum computers. For financial institutions around the world, that means lower processing costs and faster transactions. A win-win. Climate change. Quantum computers also hold immense potential from an environmental perspective, and experts predict that through quantum simulation. They will be instrumental in helping countries meet the United Nations Sustainable Developmental Goals. For example, quantum computers may be able to accelerate the discovery of new CO2 catalysts that would ensure efficient carbon dioxide recycling, whilst producing useful gases such as hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Cyber and Information Security For information security, quantum computers will have the power to break through the public key encryption widely relied upon today to protect the information. This means that data, no matter how secure it may be right now, could be vulnerable to future attacks. That's a pretty terrifying prospect for any organization with sensitive information to protect. Despite vast funding toward quantum computers, a disproportionately small amount has been vested in the funding of quantum resistance security, which could prove essential as we head into the quantum era. Luckily, post-quantum cryptography is currently being standardized by NIST and ready for widespread adoption. According to NIST, the new standards will be announced by the end of the year. The roadblocks. The primary reason that quantum computers haven't gone mainstream yet is that the best minds and inventors in the world are still struggling with high error rates and low numbers of qubits. As we address these two problems together, we will rapidly increase what IBM calls each computer's quantum volume, a way of visualizing the sheer quantity of useful calculations a quantum computer can perform. In short, for quantum computing to take off and quantum-powered MacBooks to start flying off the shelves, we need far more qubits and far fewer mistakes. That's going to take time, but at least we know what we're aiming for, and what we're up against. But even if quantum computers were perfect at some point, they would not only have advantages. Due to their incomparable computing power, all currently used encryption mechanisms would be useless from one day to the next. Secure communication or any kind of transaction over the internet could be cracked and the data misused or resold. Even many cryptocurrencies would no longer be secure and anonymous. To prevent this from happening, researchers are already working on so-called post-quantum cryptography. With new methods, secure communication should also be possible in the future. Preparing for the quantum era It's clear that quantum computers will have a significant impact on organizations around the world, advancing technology in a way that we can't yet fully comprehend. While these incredible machines will likely bring huge benefits, it's essential that we educate ourselves on the potential risks that could come if such power is misused. When it comes to cybersecurity, for example, the potential consequences are devastating, so it's vital that we take it seriously. Across the industry, we're seeing calls for the establishment of ethical guidelines to prevent quantum technology from being used to cause harm. It's an important movement, but first and foremost, we must ensure that businesses, governments, and the public are educated on the reality of quantum computers to prevent what is coming, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you liked it. You'll probably agree that the topic of quantum computing is somewhat difficult, but building one is even harder. Incidentally, Richard Feynman not only proposed a quantum computer, but he also coined the famous sentence, if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. So if you think all of this is hard to understand, you're in good company. Feynman received his Nobel Prize in 1965 for his theory of quantum electrodynamics. Don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos about technology and innovation. Let us know which innovations we should cover on our next videos in the comment section. According to our computations, we will be back with another amazing video soon. Did you know that the first gene-edited superhumans are living among us? Click the video on the right to find out more, or click the video on the left to watch our latest video. Peace out.